Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. Today we are going to learn about transplantation immunology from the paper immunology. In this module we are going to learn what transplantation is, what are the various terms associated with clinical transplantation, various graft types, the history behind the transplantation issue and later we will go for various mechanisms which actually cause rejection in various transplantations. After knowing the transplantation rejection issues, we will go through with the various stages which occur in the transplantation process. We will try to know the reasons which are behind causing a transplantation that is the transplantation antigens. We will move for allograft rejection mechanisms which can be hyperacute one, the acute one and the chronic one. Later we will discuss the issue of host versus graft and graft versus host. After that, we will go for various prevention mechanism which we can adopt to at least minimize the rejection procedures. After that, we will discuss some special cases of say fetal immunology and the concept of immunological privileged sites. After that, we will briefly discuss the various organs which are in common transplantation cases. What are the limitations behind them and what are the possible outcomes which we can adopt. Let us start with the introduction. In immunological terms, any transplantation refers to transfer of cells, tissues or organs from one side to another one. The tissue which is being transplanted is called as graft, whereas the receiving organism is called as host or recipient and the one which donates this tissue is called as donor. Now, this particular transplantation issue is the only possible solution in the case of end stage disorders. If there is an organ failure, we are only left with the solution of using transplantation. Transplantation is not only a clinical practice, but it is an important tool to understand basic immunological mechanisms. Transplantation shows the cardinal features of an adaptive immune response, means it has the specificity, it has the memory and the self non-self recognition. Shortage of donor organs and the rejection are the major concerns associated with transplantation. We will discuss the mechanisms which are lying behind the rejection of a transplanted tissue. Also we will discuss the various solutions which we can adopt to minimize that. Later on we will move forward to see what is the status of clinical transplantation. And lastly we will discuss the concepts of immunological privilege site and why a fetus is not being rejected. Ok students, let us start with the historical perspective of transplantation. The first case of transplantation was reported by Alexis Carroll in 1908. He interchanged both the kidneys in 9 cats and some of them could maintain the urinary output for 25 days. Though none of these cats survived, but it established a transplanted organ could carry out normal function in the recipient. Peter Medawar made major contribution in the field of transplantation immunology. He was working on the burn patients during World War II. His work provided the basis for understanding the graft rejections from immunological point of view. Two major observations made were the skin transplanted from one side to another within the same individual was readily accepted, whereas the one transplanted from relatives was rejected. Before Medawar, Paget's observation in Kansas City 1932 made the underlying genetic basis for rejection apparent that skin allografts between family members tended to survive for longer than those between unrelated individuals. It was clear that in order to successfully transplant the organs and tissues in genetically non-identical individuals, the immune genetic barriers must be overcome. The first successful human kidney transplant was carried out in 1954 in Boston between identical twins. In present scenario, heart, lung, kidney, pancreas, bone marrow, cornea are transplanted with high degrees of success in non-identical twins as well. You can see a timeline of major transplantation milestones here. Joseph E. Murray and E. Donald Thomas were awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1990 for their discovery concerning cell and organ transplantation in the treatment of human diseases. 
Let us move on to see what are the various graft types. The grafts can be classified according to degree of variation between donor and recipient. Accordingly, the degree of immune response to a graft varies with the type of graft. Different type of graft transplant are denoted as xenograft, allograft and isograft. Here you can see the various graft type, how they are described, various examples and what are the chances of graft rejection associated with each graft type. As you can see, if a graft is from one part of a body to another within the same individual, it is called as autograft. Whereas, if the graft is in between two different members of the same species, it is called as allograft. The graft between genetically identical individuals, for example, the monozygotic twins is called as isograft. Whereas, the grafting between individuals belonging to two different species is called as xenograft. And as you can see, the chances of acceptance is more in case of autograft and isograft and it is vigorously rejected in case of xenograft. Now, let us see what is the transplantation issue that means the rejection problems associated with it. With the advent of transplantation, it was seen that grafts received from other individuals in normal outbred populations are rejected. Studies in 1940s and 50s showed that these rejection reactions are adaptive immune mediated as they show the phenomena of specificity, memory and are lymphocyte mediated. Various clinical and experimental evidences prove that graft rejection has all the hallmarks of an adaptive immune system reaction. As you can see, the evidences that prove graft rejection to be an adaptive immune response here. The attributes of specificity and memory in graft rejections. Specificity and memory properties of an immune response are always shown in graft rejection. Immunological memory of graft rejection can be understood by the fact that when an inbred mouse of strain A is grafted second time with skin from graft B, the graft rejection takes lesser time than the first time. Specificity of graft rejection is demonstrated when along with the second time grafting from strain B to strain A, skin from strain C is also grafted in the strain A at the same time. Rejection to strain B graft follows according to second set reaction and hence is faster whereas rejection to strain C is slower just like the first set reaction. Hence, specificity as well as memory is clearly shown in the immune response to graft rejection. Here in this slide, you can see the tempo of graft acceptance and rejection. Let us discuss the role of T cells in graft rejection. The allograft rejection mechanism is always T cell mediated. The nude mice that lack thymus and hence no functional T lymphocytes are not able to reject allograft or xenograft. Avrion Michinson in 1950s for the first time proved using adoptive transfer experiments that lymphocytes are responsible for transfer of allograft immunity instead of serum antibodies. Later studies implicated the role of T lymphocytes in graft rejections. The experimental demonstration that T cells can transfer the allograft rejection is as follows. When the T cells obtained from spleen from an allograft primed mouse are transferred to an unprimed mouse of same strain, the recipient generates a second set rejection response to initial allograft from original allogenic strain. Both CD4 positive and CD8 positive T cells are involved in the graft rejection. It was proved in a study where rate of graft rejection was measured after depleting one or both type of T cells using specific monoclonal antibodies. The experiments clearly demonstrated the involvement of both type of T cells in graft rejection and that the collaboration of both cell types results in more pronounced graft rejection response. Let us see what are the various stages that are involved in cell mediated graft rejection. The cell mediated immune response to allo antigens present on the cell of grafted tissue or organ is the cause of graft rejection. 
It involves the cell mediated cytotoxicity and delayed type hypersensitivity reactions. The process of graft rejection can be divided into sensitization phase and effector phase. In the sensitization phase, proliferation of lymphocytes in recipient takes place against allo antigens present on the graft. The recognition of minor and major histocompatibility allo antigens by CD4 positive and CD8 positive T cells take place followed by their proliferation. Dendritic cells serve as major antigen presenting, AP presenting cells in graft to activate host T helper cells. Host APCs also migrate to graft tissue and process the foreign allo antigens. In some tissues and organs, APCs of graft also migrate to lymph node of recipient and stimulate T cell immune activation. In some experimental cases, the donor APCs have been reported to induce tolerance in the recipient for the surface antigens. Endothelial cells and Langerhans cells are the other APCs besides dendritic cells that help in allo antigen presentation. The amplified population of T helper cells then induce various effector mechanisms for graft rejections. In the effector stage, effector mechanisms takes place which lead to destruction of graft tissues or organs. Cytotoxic T lymphocytes mediated cytotoxicity, delayed type hypersensitivity are the major effector mechanisms besides antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity and complement mediated lysis which are less common mechanisms. Now let us discuss the various transplantation antigens. The transplanted tissue which are not rejected or which do not induce an immune response are called as histocompatible. Histo incompatibility results due to antigenic differences. The antigens which play major role in transplantations are encoded by more than 40 different loci. These are broadly classified into three categories as the blood group antigens, then the major histocompatibility complex antigens and the minor histo incompatibility antigens. The ABO blood group antigen represent major blood transplantation antigens. The ABO antigens are polymorphic in nature and are present on the surface of erythrocytes. The blood group A alleles, alleles A and B code for different sugars on the RBC surfaces. Blood group O is null allele and does not code for any sugar whereas AB represents both alleles. These alleles are codominantly expressed and follow Mendelian inheritance. An individual can either be heterozygous or homozygous for the inherited alleles. The reason why these are called as transplantation antigens is we all have isohemoglutinins that is antibodies to these blood group antigens. These antibodies develop as a result of cross reactivity to certain ubiquitous microbes. A person having blood group A possess antibodies for B allele in its serum and if such a person is transfused with a blood carrying B allele, hemolytic reaction mediated by type 2 hypersensitivity reaction takes place that is a type of transplantation rejection only. The another type of transplantation antigen is major histocompatibility complex antigens. For the transplantation of nucleated cell, the major histocompatibility complex antigens that is MHC are the major barriers. The MHC molecules are present on all the nucleated cells and their primary role is to direct T cells to carry out their function. Just like the blood group antigen coding locus, genes encoding for MHC molecules are also polymorphic. There are six different loci and a very large number of different allelic forms which exist for MHC. The MHC complex in humans is called as human leukocyte antigens or HLA complex and is present in chromosome number 6. Whereas in mice it is called as H2 complex and is present on chromosome number 17. The MHC loci are closely linked and thus the individuals inherit the alleles encoded by the closely linked loci as two sets, one from each parent, whereas each set of alleles is referred as haplotype. 
the varied combinations of many different allelic forms which are co-dominantly expressed ensure very rare chances of two individuals having identical set of alleles and thus form the basis of alloantigen rejection. The minor histocompatibility complex antigens besides the MHC are presenting another set of transplantation antigens. They are usually weaker and usually targeted in late onset rejections. The tissue rejection due to minor histocompatibility differences is less vigorous than the major compatibility differences. But still they may lead to graft rejection and that is the reason why even successful transplantation between HLA identical individual also require some sort of immunosuppression. The non ABO blood group antigens and the HY systems antigens are some of the best studied minor histocompatibility antigens. Now we will study what is the allograft rejection mechanism. Depending upon the organ or tissue which is being transplanted and the immune re response involved the graft rejections have different time courses and accordingly they are classified as hyperacute rejections that is if the rejection occurs within first 24 hours of transplantation or it can be acute rejection that means the rejection begins in first view, few weeks after transplantation or it can be a chronic rejection also where the rejection starts from months to years after transplantation. The hyperacute rejections occur if the host serum has pre-existing antibodies against graft antigens. The mechanisms for presence of pre-existing antibodies for allogenic MHC antigens can be if a woman has repeated pregnancies or there are repeated blood transfusions or the individuals having a previous graft. In the acute rejections the transplants is manifested by cell mediated immune system. T helper cell activation and proliferation leads to activation of various immune effector cells including natural killer cells and macrophages which further lead to cytotoxicity. In the chronic rejection, the chronic rejection takes place after months or years of transplantation and include both humoral as well as cell mediated immune response. Tissue typing and immunosuppressive drugs have greatly enhanced the short term survival of transplant but chronic rejections are not yet understood or managed memory response, cellular immunity to HLA and minor transplantation antigens are also key factors involved in a chronic rejection. Let us see what is graft versus host or host versus graft rejection concept. Most of the transplants are rejected due to recognition and response of recipient's immune system to the donor alloantigens and is called as host versus graft rejection. But in some cases for example in bone marrow transplant an additional problem arises where the viable active T lymphocytes in the donor tissue recognize the mismatched HLA alleles of recipient and respond to them. This response is called as graft versus host response. So in short we can say the host versus graft reaction is the response to donor HLA by recipient immune system. Whereas the graft versus host reaction is the response to recipient HLA by donor T cells. How can we prevent the phenomena of graft rejection? The various mechanisms are possible which can help to minimize the graft rejection. For example, the familial grafting. The major histocompatibility complex or HLA in humans is a major barrier for transplant acceptance. But due to inheritance pattern of HLA genes, the transplantations within the family members reduce the allele mismatch significantly. Generally, there is very little crossover within the locus and the whole locus is inherited. Thus, there is 50% match of HLA alleles of a transplant if it is from parents to siblings, whereas it is 25% match from sibling to sibling transplant. Hence, familial grafting ensures better graft acceptance. The another mechanism is cross matching. Cross matching is done before transplantation to check 
that there are no performed antibodies in the recipient serum for the donor HLA. In this method, serum from potential recipients is mixed with the lymphocytes of donor in the presence of complement for evaluating lysis or stained with fluorescent antibodies to human immunoglobulins and assayed by the cytometry or fluorescence microscopy. The positive fluorescence or dead cell indicate the presence of anti-donor antibodies which may lead to hyperacute rejection of graft. The yet another mechanism is antibody mediated microcytotoxicity test. The presence or absence of various MHC alleles can be detected using this test. In this test, the WBCs from the recipient and donor are taken in various wells on a microtiter plate and antibodies against various MHC alleles are added along with the complement proteins. The lysis or cytotoxicity is then assessed using vital dyes such as tripen blue. If a WBC express a particular MHC molecule for which specific antibody is added along with complement, cell lysis takes place which is further detected by uptake of tripen blue. Hence, HLA typing can be done by this test in order to detect histocompatibility. Yet another mechanism is mixed lymphocyte reaction or MLR. This test is used to quantify the degree of compatibility in MHC class 2 of donor and recipient. The lymphocytes from recipient serve as responder cells whereas the lymphocytes from the donor serve as stimulator cells. These stimulator cells are X-ray irradiated or treated with mitomycin C. The T cell activation which is indicated by proliferation of recipient T cells is measured by intake of H3 thymidine in DNA. Greater the H3 thymidine intake means greater the class 2 MHC differences in donor and recipient. The intense proliferation of recipients lymphocytes indicate poor prognosis for the survival of graft. Even after that, we do have various immunosuppressive drugs which can be of general or specific nature. Some allelic mismatches and histoincompatibility is always observed which require suppression of immune system of the recipient. But immunosuppressive drugs have many disadvantages too. Here in this table, you can see the various common immunosuppressive drugs and their mechanisms of action. This can be the cytotoxic or mitotic inhibitors, it can be the corticosteroids, it can be various immunophilins and may be a general x-ray irradiation. In animal studies, it has been seen that the specificity associated with the general immunosuppressive drugs is very low and there is a need to develop specific immune suppression to allografts which is achieved by using monoclonal antibodies. Monoclonal antibodies can be used to deplete the recipient of a certain broad or specific cell population or to block the co-stimulatory signals. After studying all these transplantation issue, let us discuss what are the special cases of concept of immunological privilege site and the special case of fetal transplantation. There are some sites in the body at which transplanted allografts are not rejected despite of genetic mismatch between the recipient and donor. These sites lack lymphatic vessels and sometimes even the blood. Vessels because of which allo antigens of graft are unable to sensitize the recipient's lymphocytes and hence usually accepted. Some of its such sites in humans are cornea of eye, testis, uterus and the brain. The fetal transplantation. Fetus carries HLA alleles from both the parents and thus is an allograft for maternal tissues. There are various possible mechanisms that prevent the rejection of fetal such as the complement regulatory proteins produced by the cytotrophoblast inhibits the effect of antibodies directed to paternal antigens. Indolamine 2,3-dioxygenase is produced by synchytriotrophoblast which degrades tryptophan required for T cell activation. Cytotrophoblast produces IL-10 that possess immunosuppressive properties. The expression of conventional HLA class 1 molecules by synchytiotrophoblast is lacking which is required for T cytotoxic cells. 
the cytotrophoblast expresses unconventional HLAG which acts as a ligand for KID present on NK cells. Let us see the case of clinical transplantation. A number of factors that decide the frequency with which an organ or tissue is transplanted are availability of that organ or tissue, clinical requirement of transplantation, grade of difficulty in transplantation process, post transplantation caring and various factors affecting acceptance or rejection of transplant. Here in this table you can see some of the clinical transplantations in practice or in development along with the common reasons or disease they are associated with. Organs or tissues shown in blue are routinely transplanted ones whereas the organs and tissues shown in yellow are still not in much routine. Let us see what are the limitations and possible solutions of clinical transplantation. The success of clinical transplantation is limited by two major issues that is shortage of donor organs and chronic rejection of transplant. Shortage of donor organs is always a high demand is always a problem for transplantation. There is always a high demand of organs or tissues for clinical transplantation whereas the pool of donor is very limited. Hence alternative approaches need to be investigated which can fulfill the demand such as development of artificial mechanical organs, therapeutic cloning and tissue engineering to develop artificial human organs or the xenotransplantation. The chronic rejection of transplantation results in continual damage to transplanted organ and thus necessitates the immune suppression of recipient which may lead to increased incidences of infection and malignancy. In order to resolve it, tolerance need to be induced in the recipient for the graft. We need to develop assays to determine tolerance levels and transplant therapies developed in animal models to clinical practice. So students let us summarize what we all have learned in this module so far. Now we know what a clinical transplantation is. It is simply a transfer of cells, tissues or organs from one site to another. The tissue which is being transplanted or the organs is called as graft. The recipient is called as host and the one which is donating it is called as donor. Now we know that a transplantation mechanism is simply an adaptive immune response because it shows the properties or the cardinal features such as specificity, the memory and the self non self recognition. We also know that transplant rejection is T cell mediated. According to degree of variation found between donor and recipient, the grafts can be classified as autograft, isograft, allograft and xenograft. A graft is rejected because of the allo antigens which are present on the graft tissues and this rejection mechanism occurs in two phases or stages. The first stage is called as sensitization phase where the lymphocytes proliferate against the allo antigens. Whereas in the effector stage there are various effector mechanisms that are operated which ultimately lies or destruct the grafted tissues. The tissues which are not rejected or accepted are called as histocompatible. Whereas the histoincompatibility results due to the difference in antigenic differences. Now these antigenic differences can be because of the blood group antigens, because of histoincompatibility complex or the minor and major histocompatibility complexes. The transplantation can be avoided by adopting various mechanisms such as familial grafting, the cross matching, tissue typing etc. We have also seen the various special cases of fetal transplantation where the fetus adopts various mechanisms to avoid the transplantation rejections. Also we have seen the cases of immunologically privileged sites which are the sites in the body which are privileged in terms of immune rejections. We have also covered the various common organs which are in clinical practice what are the various limitations in adopting the transplantation and what are the various solutions we are adopting them. Thank you.